So you receive an email, there's a fantastic deal between Montreal to London for $714. I got an email too and I tried to book and I can't find anything for this price. So how does it work? Well, my name is Victor. I'm going to talk to you about uh, travel pricing, the second video on the subject. So welcome back. What you need to realize is all those seats will not be available at this price, only some of it. So if you take, for example, an Airbus 320, which will not be doing that route, but just for the easy example, because fair pricing is very complicated. Some people who study years to understand how it works. I'm just gonna talk about it for three, four minutes. So I'm gonna be very, very basic. So if you take an Airbus 320, who's got 185 seats on average, um, maybe about 10 seats will be available at this price and the rest will be more expensive because the airline will need to make some mar to make some margin to pay for the loss they're doing on your special deal that they've sent you. It's just to get you to go on a website and start to have a look with them. Um, <clears throat> so just if you look just in the economy cabin, uh, even on a on an Airbus 320 with only 185 passengers, you may have about something like 10 different fare classes. So fare class will be a price and will come with rules and restrictions. Um, usually the cheaper the price is, the less flexibility you have and less product you have included. So for example, you may not have any check-in bag, you may not have seat selection, you may not have food, etc. You go higher, then you have a little bit more products and more amenities coming with the price. But there is another factor that's very important, is the time. When did you book? So for example, if I'm booking six months ahead of time, I might get a flexible fare for let's say $200. But if I book a month before departure, uh, non-flexible fares so the cheapest price might be $600 and a flexible fare might be uh, $900. So the factor, the time factor is very important because at this time the airline have a better idea if this flight will be popular and you can make some margin on it or the flight might leave empty or with empty seats. How much does a seat cost? There's a great video, I'm going to put the link somewhere here or there, I don't know where it is, <clears throat> but a card where you can watch a great, great video that explains uh, in very roughly how much a seat cost in the plane. So they took the example of a flight, a full flight between New York and Los Angeles, which is a very popular route, and the seat cost about $70 to the airline if the, if the plane is full. So anything above $70 is margin. However, remember that not every seat might be full. So if there's only 184 passengers on board, the $70 needs to be spread against the other passengers. It's 183, so there's $140 that needs to be spread to everyone, etc., etc. And that's just if you consider only those two cities exist. If you add extra flights, because let's say you're flying from Boston to LA, to New York to LA, well, we need to consider also the Boston-New York flight, which is have a different system to calculate and um, is not maybe a, such a popular route. So then we need to make some margin on the popular route between New York and LA to compensate any loss they do on the other routes. That's why it's quite a big nightmare. It's called revenue management. There's people working on that with massive computer all day long. Um, what they study is the three things. First is the offer, how many seats we have available for sale, keeping in mind that uh, an empty seat once the plane take off doesn't bring any money to the airline, they actually cost because it's a fixed cost as I was talking about before, but also they analyze how, what's the demand. So they see, is it a popular holiday season? Are people going on, on, on vacation at this time of year? And also, um, why everybody's trying to look online for price for that day. Maybe this is a big sports event or something. So they will increase the price to mark, to mark, uh, to uh, compensate the loss they might do on more lower season. The third factor they have when they do revenue management is competition. What's the price of the competition? Are we still competitive with our product? Uh, and um, they can have to look for direct routes, but also non-direct routes, because some passengers are happy to make a stop somewhere or to go to their final destination and save a few hundred dollars. So it's, it's quite complicated. Next month, I'll give you more insight, but I hope it clarify. Um, the, what I suggest today, if you're looking for a flight, the best rule of them is to book as early as you can. If you need flexibility, book it straight from the beginning. Uh, and if your plans change, you can also have travel insurance, but don't blame the airline if you need to change your plan and you didn't choose travel insurance or flexible ticket, because keep in mind, that was your decision at the time you booked. Um, so I'll see you next month, I'll add a little bit more. Next week will be a different video, I'll talk about me a little bit, I'll let you know who is Victor and some information about me. And then, so I'll see you next week, it's a date, bye.
Mm-hmm.